we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's October 20th here in Seoul, and I'm Shin Yeun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Cheska Dainhong. Happy Friday, everyone! Happy Friday! And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. All right, now both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. From June, the world has seen El Nino, and this is when sea temperatures in the eastern Pacific go up by more than 0.5 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. NASA scientists say El Nino will last well into next year when it will reach its peak, and this phenomenon will wreak major climate-related damage worldwide. Financial experts on Wednesday forecast that this would bring inflation, which is inflation in agricultural products. And the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport has released data on the 1,000 people in Korea who bought the most real estate in the past five years. Those thousand people bought an average of 44 properties each, and among the top 1,000 real estate property owners, 161 were in their 20s and 30s. There were even four people in their 20s who bought more than 70 properties. And last but not least, do you identify yourself as an adult? Well, according to a survey done by a trend monitoring institution on 1,000 people aged 19 to 59, half said they didn't think they were an adult. Instead, 51.6% said they were kiddults, a combination of kid and adult. And the majority of those surveyed said in order to have a kid, no, actually, in order to, for you to be an adult, you should have a kid, be married, or have a job. And another popular definition of an adult was someone who would be willing to sacrifice themselves for the better good and foster better understanding within a community. Most also said they didn't really have a respectable adult figure in their lives. So here at the studio, I would like to ask, what do you guys think it means to be an adult? Ah, uh, so that's a good question. <laughs> that I don't was know, a very long pause. I don't know if I, I would consider myself as an adult because a lot of people, obviously, like I said, there link maturity with uh, being adult. Yeah. But we all know people out there who are 30, 40, 50 years old and still as immature as a 10 year old like myself. <laughs> now, but the boring answer is, in my opinion, the definition of an adult is when you're out of your teens. So you've developed as a, you know, as, as, at the top you can get like you're not going right. to get any taller mm. you're only just going to get older biologically you're an adult mm. so i would say 20 but when you are 20 30 40 50 year olds look at you as a child so that's the difference and mm. i look a lot at a lot of people who are in their early 20s as children and i'm sure 40 year olds do the same with me as mm. well so mm. i think Biologically speaking, it's about when you're 20, but yes, an adult is sort of subjective as I well. I completely agree. Biologically speaking, once you hit legal age of 19, I yeah. think you're an adult. Mm. But then it's really hard to identify yourself as an adult because as Walter mm. mentioned, mm. it really deeply intervenes with maturity. Absolutely. What do you think about that? You know, I know the legal age is like when you hit 19, you mm. become so-called adult, like legally. But my definition of adult, I think, has a lot more to do with emotional maturity. Yeah, for sure. So when I respect someone or when I see someone as an adult figure, it's when that their emotions don't cloud their judgments. Mm. And they are so mature enough to embrace and right. accept the differences. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but I think that's one of the most mature things that a human being can do in a world where everyone is trying to voice their opinions and you know try to you know point fingers at each other. Like that would be an ultimate definition mm. of an adulthood. Yeah. And you know, I was quite relieved to see the survey results because more than 50%, like 50 51.6% said they didn't feel like an adult even though they were <laughs> aged between 19, even up to 59. Yes. So I was like, okay, that's really nice because I didn't necessarily identify as an adult as well. And I could completely agree. In order for you to be an adult, I think you need to be well off economically as well. Mm. In these times, for instance, it feels like you need to have your own house. You need to be married. You need mm. to have your kid. And that was actually well represented in the survey results. I think it's quite interesting as well because I have all those three and I still don't feel like an adult. <laughs> I, was <laughs> so, I was actually going to like, say. Like, you know, I, you know, I have money and I have my family and everything, but mm. still, like, uh, it's still a different feeling, I guess. Mm. For me, it, you know, the maturity level is, is all over the place. You know, I've got 
friends who are much older than me who are yeah. as immature as mm, me. Mm. Um, I do agree with what uh, Cheska said as well. The way you interact with people as well is very, uh, I guess, adult-like. But I'd also say that would also be more maturity than being an adult, to so be honest with you. Emotional maturity would be the best key to becoming an adult then. Listen, th that's sort of, I think, unfair because there's a lot of, uh, you know, unstable emotional people out there <laughs> who would probably be as just as responsible as me. Um, Are you so, sure? Yeah, well, I think so, anyway. I mean, this conversation can go on and on, and actually in the future episodes, we have a similar discussion topic ready for you, so please stay in tune for that. In the meantime, that was our news feed for this Friday, and let's switch gears to our main discussion topic. Because it's a Friday, it means it's time to introduce some of the hottest places in Seoul you can go to better enjoy the autumn season. So before we introduce where you guys can go, here at the studio, how do you guys usually spend the fall season? You know, when we talk about the Korean fall, I cannot not mention the hiking. Yes. I know we went mm -hmm. and we covered it in the last episode, but you know, Korea is known for its very four distinctive seasons. Right. So hiking is one of the best activities I would love to do in the fall. Another thing that I would like to point out is, I don't know if you've guys been, but have you guys been camping? Camping? Yeah, like either a caravan or, you know, just, you know, taking a tent mm -hmm. or, you know, you know, in Korea we call it glamping. Yes, That's where do. you don't yeah. have to take any of the equipment. Just your body. Yeah, just yeah. your body and everything is prepared for. Thank you, Korea. Mm -hmm. But that's actually one of the activities I love to do in the fall because during the day, it's cool and nice enough for you to do daily activities. Mm -hmm. And at night, it is just chilly enough. You get that blanket and then sit by the fire and roast the sweet potatoes. Oh my god. <laughs> and I know you're a big fan of sweet potatoes. I love yes. sweet potatoes uh -huh. and the chestnuts. Right. And then for those who drink, maybe a beer for people like me, you know, have a little bit of like mm -hmm. soda and mm -hmm. just, you know, have a little music on and, yeah. and see the stars. Like that's for me like a definition of fall. That's the definition of fall. And I think we're blessed enough to be living in a country where we have four distinct seasons. Though compared to the past, they aren't as distinct as before. Mm -hmm. But still nowadays, I think the fall weather is pulling off pretty it well here in nice Korea. What about you, Alter? Uh, I think fall or well, autumn season is my favorite season because it's when I'm most active or try to be as most active outside because Springtime, though it's very nice, weather is great. I have really severe allergies, so I don't really like to go out during the spring. But when fall comes around, everything is perfect. Usually the weather is very cool. I get to wear my favorite type of clothes. And uh, even in Australia, when it's, it's actually a different time. So at the moment in Australia, it's spring. Mm. spring. Mm. And um, so whenever fall was around, it was my favorite time to go out, play a lot of sports, like Jessica mentioned, go hiking as well. Yeah. Um, yeah Yes, so at the moment, I'm as active as I will be before I hibernate like a bear in winter. <laughs> so both of you guys mentioned something that has to do with nature, going outside. And I think a big part of enjoying the fall here in Korea is being able to enjoy nature, specifically lakes, ponds, and all these Ooh. different types of rivers here in Korea. Korea is known for that. And that's exactly what we're going to be introducing to you guys today. We will take you around the best rivers and parks here in Seoul and maybe nearby the greater Seoul metropolitan area, starting with the iconic Han River Park, Hangang. Yes. So, Cheska, why don't you take this one? Oh, you know, when it comes to introducing Korea, I'm sometimes not the best expert, mm. but when it comes to Han River, I'm definitely your person because I live near the Han River Park and I bike almost every single night. So, Han River is so perfect mm. for biking because they have this beautiful bike road just right side the river and you can just rent these bikes or bring your own out and then just enjoy the day. It's so beautiful. Beautiful, and one of the activities that I would highly recommend is tenting. So Han River, you can rent all the amenities for tenting and they let you, you know, just borrow these equipment and just like the couples they're doing right there, set on a little table, you know, have a lot of fun. And one activity you have to try is the convenience store yes. ramen. Has anyone tried yet? I loved it. <laughs> they literally have everything ready for you to cook, eat and they also do these crazy delivery services of chicken that just gets to you wherever you are. You call them up and say, hey, I'm in Han River and they will deliver jajangmyeon, noodles, Anything. chicken, whatever you want. <laughs> and also um, during the summer seasons, one activity that is very famous is the water sports. And I haven't done it, but they have these sailings and you know, like water skis that you can just do in Han River. I did do paddle boarding actually, mm. which was actually quite fun. And at night, they do these like late night markets where yes. there's so many mm. 
good food trucks that you can just go and buy food and they have you know different selections from like Korean to Mexican to so many different cuisines barbecues there. Yeah. and you name it and this is probably the Panpo yes. Pan River Park where they do the night um, waterfalls every I think 30 minutes during the night and the night view in Han River Park is just so stunning it's sometimes very calming, you go with your friends. I sometimes go alone just to, you know, get my thoughts settled. It's just a great place that I recommend to anyone. They even do these great fireworks. And it's Hebit Island, they sometimes host very international events that, you know, sometimes they do like a French embassy does an event. And it's just a great place for people to come and see different views, you know, just all throughout the night. It's yeah. one of my very, very favorite places. And I think the footage we just saw was actually the recent International Fireworks uh, Exhibition. Yeah. It's one of the biggest international fireworks uh, exhibitions you mm -hmm. can see in the world. A lot of people gather on a weekend to see it, and it's just amazing. But also, I think all of us here in the studio have really special memories in regards to Hangang because it's just a popular and must-go place yes. if you live in Seoul. Mm -hmm. Do you have any you would like to share? Well, yeah, I've been there several times, but for me, it's actually a little bit uh, difficult to get there because over the weekend, there are usually a lot of people. Uh -huh. So you've got to find those little sort of uh, not so popular areas mm -hmm. to have a nice picnic where there's not everyone around you. Yes, but yes. the reason why there are so many people is because it's just so popular and there's so much to do there. Mm. It is a beautiful view, especially if you get a nice clear day like we have been here in Korea recently. I mean, it's a great place to go with family, friends, you can do a lot of things. But yeah, sometimes, especially the fireworks festival, yeah. it's a really difficult to get that home. Yeah. So <laughs> if you're going to go, I please recommend it, but just expect maybe the trip home yeah. <laughs> might be a bit, you know, uh, you know. It's going to be jam packed with people. Yeah. And it's actually in Yoido Han River Park, mm -hmm. but then some hacks that I would like to give you as a local is you don't need to necessarily go to that specific Han River Park. No, wow. not at all. You can go nearby because all you need to do is look up at the sky oh, and you'll see these fireworks. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I love Han River Park because one, I do live in Seoul, which means it's accessible to mm -hmm. go to, but I feel like each park has its own theme. Oh. For instance, if I go to Yoido, I would be looking forward to food trucks. <laughs> if I go to Panpo, as you guys saw on the screen, I would be looking to the, towards the lights because it's so nice to walk there. Mm. And there's two bridges. The one is Panpo Bridge on the top mm -hmm. and Tamsu Bridge on the bottom. Oh, that's true. It's a great place to bike. It's it's pretty tough, actually, because there's a little bump a little on hike, the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the downhill hike, ooh, that's oh, that's, that's when you really favorite. can enjoy yes. it. Mm -hmm. But you can actually feel like you're underwater, basically, because Tamsu in Korean means submerged. Mm -hmm. So you're under Han River Park looking at the beautiful scenery there whilst enjoying the breeze. Mm -hmm. And Cheska, you mentioned very well that Han River Park is iconic and I also think that has to do with a lot of K-drama shoots coming ah, in by. That's mm. right. Actually, when I was biking several weeks ago, I did encounter those um, broadcast yes. trucks mm. that had lights on. So I think they're still shooting a lot of things at that site and it's becoming those very popular spots. If you watch the K-dramas very carefully, the dating scenes I think always take place in Exactly. <laughs> You mentioned the a great point. River. Yeah, and it's like a go-to dating place. Like maybe on your second or third date, if you have a significant <laughs> other, you guys can walk down to Han River Park because that's where a lot of youth go. Okay. Now, another iconic site involving water is Sokchon Lake. Right, Walter? Mm -hmm. Tell us where this that's is. That's correct. So Sokchon Lake is actually located in Jamsil Dong in Songpagu, which is on the sort of east side of Seoul. Mm -hmm. Now, this place has everything. I mean, Han River has got a lot of things, but th the best thing about this place in particular is the fact that it's really, sh I would say a sh relatively short walk, definitely compared to Han River. Mm -hmm. It used to be a part of Han River, but the best thing is that it's cl so close to really iconic places. Now, as you can see on the video there, there was a, a department store, during the spring, Cherry Blossom Festival is mm. extremely popular. You, you will see a lot more people than you see there during the Cherry Blossom mm. Festival, but still great opportunities for you to take photos because the cherry blossoms cover the whole road, as you can see, which is called Dure uh, Road or walk, Walkway because there's no cars on there. But <laughs> yes, see how people there, I mean, this is the springtime as we can see, Aww. but they also have a festival during the autumn, uh, autumn time because you'll see all the leaves turn brown and they fall and it's really beautiful as well. Now this is a place that I think you could visit 
all seasons. Mm. Like in the summer, it's a great brisk walk. As you can see, there are a lot of people doing exercises as yeah. well. Um, in the winter, though very cold, the, the, the lake freezes over, the snow sits oh, on the side. So nice. But it's also connected, or right next to, the biggest tower in Korea, mm. which is Lotte World Tower. And it's got a observatory at the top, so you can see all of South Korea's, well, Seoul anyway. <laughs> Unless you've got super good vision. Anyway, the but, entire South Korea. Yeah, at the bottom of that is also a department store as well as a mall. I mean, not just that, cafes, restaurants, mm. it has everything. You think Han River is a great dating place? This place <laughs> is one of the best places because no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you've got tons of things to do. If you have that awkward date where you're like, I don't know what to do next, <laughs> you just go to Sok Chon Lake and just be like, hey, let's go for a walk or let's yeah. go to a cafe or let's go to the mall. Yeah. So many things in that area. And because you mentioned the location is the best to brag about in Sok Chon Lake, I feel, because there's also an amusement park. Yeah. Yes, Man. exactly. I forgot to mention that. Lotte yeah. World is Exactly, amazing. Lotte World is amazing there. So once you have a stroll around the park, you can go with your friend or your significant partner to the amusement park. There's also a mall there. Yep. There's also an aquarium. There's just so mm. many things to do in that area. Have you ever been to Sokchon Lake? I have, but Grace, mm. I don't know if it was a competition, but I do feel like I need to represent Han Han <laughs> because he I kept won. saying, that I love Sokchon Hose, by the way, and I love Lotte World, but because yeah. he kept saying that it's a better place yeah. to date and do activities, uh -huh. I'm like, I don't I don't know if I should rep <laughs> that much. I love it, but Han River's bigger. It's bigger, so it's a little different. I think yeah. Chun Lake, the biggest advantage, as I mentioned before, is the location. It's true, very convenient, right very by the convenient. subway station. And you can enjoy a lot more things. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Han River, I think you have to either order in food, that's but that's also the benefit that's of it. The, that's the oh. point. Yeah, that's you can pick it around. It sounds like you're more on my side there, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I like both equally, <laughs> but now to break this tie, I'd Please like do. to introduce one. A lake and park outside of the brinks of Seoul. It's in Ilsan, a city northwest of Seoul in Gyeonggi-do province. Now, if you visit Ilsan, you have to pass by something called the Lake Park. So take a look at the screen to see what Lake Park is about. It's actually one of the most popular destinations for residents and visitors in Yersan. The lake alone covers 72.9 acres. Wow. And nearby, you can enjoy beautiful wildflowers, plants, botanical gardens, as well as a bike path. And because it's one of the go-to places to visit in the area, it often holds many annual shows and festivals, such as the Light Blooming Festival, where hundreds of lights fill the park at night, a fireworks show and flower festival. Now, now, I personally love going to Irisan's Lake Park because of the view, but another place nearby in Gyeonggi-do at Yangpyeonggun County is Tumurmori. And Tumurmori in Korean translates to where two waters meet. And that's where Pukhangang River and Namhangang River meet. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular Korean TV drama and movie shoot location. And I've also been there a few times because it's near Seoul. The drive there is beautiful. And they have this pond with a lot of lotus flowers. And oh, it's beautiful. really amazing to see this type of scenery because it's not too far away from Seoul, but at least it feels like you're in the center of nature, so you can get away from the bustling city. And speaking of Lotus Flower, they have a very famous hot dog place called <laughs> Lotus Hot Dog, and the line is really long, but it's definitely worth it. I actually drove from my house just to try that hot dog. <laughs> you know what? I was waiting for Grace to say something about the food. I was like, why isn't the food option coming up? No, guys, because I think, okay, to answer the very first question of our discussion, the way I enjoy the autumn season is by going to a beautiful place but more importantly, enjoying the good food there. Yes. And but that, that's every season, isn't it, for you? <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter which season it is, but the reason why I would like to represent Tumur Modi is because it has its own iconic food menu there. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, okay, for Han River, there's chimek, chicken mm -hmm. and beer, yeah. and ramen. Mm -hmm. But what does Hopchon Hozu have? Everything that you guys don't. Okay, that's true. <laughs> and, and it has so many different <laughs> restaurants. Yeah, look the world. You can pretty much get anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but for Tumur Modi, if you go to that exact location, do try the hot dogs out because it's so big and they give you so much sugar on the top. Uh, see, I'm not a fan of the This is one thing I didn't get in Korea is when you put sugar on a... We, in Australia, we call them dagwood dogs or I think uh -huh. corn dogs in America. Right, right. They put sugar on it here. Yeah. I don't get that. It's a deep fried dish with yeah. tomato sauce and mustard. mustard but and you put sugar on it and it's a sausage. The more the merrier. The more sugar the merrier. <laughs> Tastes amazing. And but that's a completely different topic area that we're walking into. I'm but not anyways, even going to get into this. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we just explained to you guys like the lakes and ponds in Seoul, nearby Seoul, but there's also just so many different places. For instance, in Andong, there's yes. different lakes you can go to mm. and just so much beautiful scenery. And if and, I may add, mm. there's a lot of fall festivals that are going around. The, the grass festival, the silver grass, and the reed, and even the colored leaves, they mm. have like hikes that are very, yes. very specially catered to fall festivals. Mm. So those are all around South Korea happening at the moment. Because as we mentioned, South Korea still has distinctive seasons, mm. which means we can enjoy the autumn foliage, given the fact that we can go up these hiking trails up to lift different little hills and national parks. Now, we asked our viewers if they've ever visited a lake or river in Korea and to share what their experience was like. So if you take a look at the screen, you can find out what our global viewers have to share on their experience. Let's start with Borita Consumer. I've been to the Sejong Lake Park and Kungang River many times. I love the Kungang pedestrian ring, especially at night. Nothing like that where I'm from. Bike and Blanu said, I've been to Nakdong River many times and it is so beautiful. Now I want to go to Han River at nighttime. Benny D97 said, I never visited any rivers or lakes in Korea, but my dream destination is Nakdonggang and of course Hangang River in Seoul. See guys, I think, Cheska, I think this builds onto your weight that Han River is a popular destination. Yes! <laughs> it's pretty hard to say that Take because that the water. thing goes, Han River goes through all of Seoul. <laughs> that is true. It's really hard to compete in <laughs> yeah, when yeah, you yeah. think about Take it. Take that. <laughs> exactly. But let's end off by giving a few pointers to what our viewers can do to better enjoy Seoul's autumn and fall season here in Korea, starting with you, Cheska. I would definitely recommend that they Google the fall festivals mm. because there are so many happening, not just in Seoul, but outside of Seoul. You mentioned like Andong, mm. but there are so many beautiful places that are really offering very affordable and sometimes free, yeah. like festivals to see flowers and leaves and everything. And another thing is sometimes it's really nice to just take a book, go out to a park, and just sit there. I know. And just bask in that full mm. weather too. That's also pretty nice for me. And nowadays, Seoul City is holding these things where they allow people to sit in front of City Hall on beanbag chairs. <gasps> and all you need is a book. And as I keep mentioning Han mm. River, maybe because I like it so much, <laughs> but there's so many festivals there, like a light festival, drone festival. There's so many different things and it changes week by week. So it's really great to go to Seoul Metropolitan's website mm. and see what type of festivals there are for you to enjoy. Mm. What about you, Walter? I guess I'm not as poetic as you to uh, kind of read a book outside, I'd rather read a book inside. <laughs> but saying that, I would say that the sad thing about Korea's weather, especially mm. the spring and fall seasons, is that they are quite short compared yeah. to the summer and the winter seasons. So if you do plan, which is sort of past at the moment, come early during autumn because then you'll be able to ex like have the beautiful weather. I mean, it rained yesterday, but that's the most rain I've seen in the last yes. three or four weeks. And every day since has been blue skies, high skies mm. with barely any air pollution, which is great. So the best time, I think, to come to Korea, in my opinion, is what month is it? October. It's October right It's now. October. Sorry, I lose all the months. So, <laughs> so, so like towards around the middle of September, I think, or the end of September is a perfect time to come to Korea because you'll never have a bad day, I think, yeah, and while all, doing it. All you need is a sweater because in the afternoon it gets pretty warm, but then in the evening and early morning, it's just sweater That's weather. too, mm. like hoodie weather, just like Hoodie Walter's weather wearing. like Walter. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do and for the next few Fridays, we will continue to take you around the best places to go to in Seoul once you're here during the autumn time. But in the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Cheska Dain Hong. Plus, as always, mine. And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. All right. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week. We are News Generation. Generation.